so, um, <coughs> uh, okay, so wiped everything out to, to save a bit of time, but hopefully uh, you remember the, the basic concepts. Um, <coughs> so what I'm gonna speak about now is what we call subcriticality. This is a property of a rule, which is which is very important. Uh, and uh, if you're so, if you're familiar with um, the ideas from physics, this is what's called super renormalizability. So, think subcriticality is is roughly equivalent to super renormalizability. This is a way of formalizing it. So, let's fix a scaling um, S. So, this is a tuple of uh, of numbers, uh, which belong to one infinity to the d, uh, and uh, what we call a degree map um, from our set L into R. So remember that this was the set psi and I um, with uh, um, the degree of S being negative and the degree of um, I being being positive. So um, uh, so uh, the scaling is the natural scaling that you put onto Euclidean space that comes from the structure of your parabolic operator. So for example, I mean uh, at this stage it, it's just they're just numbers. But when again when you're thinking about your equation, if you think of it as um, as being the leading principle. Um, a differential operator being the, the heat operator, this, the natural scaling that you would pick would be a bunch of ones plus a two. So time is the last coordinate and it scales double uh, the, because this is a, 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 an operator of, of order two, this is, and the first one is a, of order one. Um, <coughs> what you should think of uh, as uh, this, the degree of the noise uh, of Xi representing is uh, the regularity of the, of the noise. So remember we had this Kolmogorov theorem right in the very first uh, lecture. And uh, for example, in the case of uh, space-time white noise, um, uh, the regularity of the, of the noise was minus d over two, minus one half, uh, minus kappa, or kappa arbitrarily, uh, kappa positive, but, but arbitrarily small. So this is the case of, 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 of white noise. White noise on R. Rd, and then what you should think of as uh, being uh, this is that uh, it's the regularizing effect of the of the parabolic operator. So this is what's what's coming from the shouter estimates. So this is this. Uh, so in the case of the heat kernel, it would be two, and this was I think denoted by eta in in, in Lorenzo's talk. This is the, exactly the same eta. Okay, so we we fix this. Um, and then we define, uh, we extend the scaling um, to uh, to tau in, in every so to every tree uh, by saying that tau is uh, equal to. So I'm going to give a recursive definition because um, I quite quite like recursive definitions. Um, remember. Uh, these, so the, the, the edge types uh, would, that I don't reference are the edges attached to the root. Uh, and um, and the tau j's are the trees that appear uh, after the root of, of, of tau. Um, where I define K, KS as being the sum of KISI, and uh, uh, if I have a sum um, edge type TK, this is equal to the degree of, of T uh, minus K of S. So uh, I, I put a minus here because I, I think of K as being a derivative of, of one of those guys. So whenever I differentiate, I lose a certain amount of, of regularity. Um, okay, so, um, uh, so maybe an important point, uh, tau of S, so if I give you a tree and you compute tau of S, this is not the regularity 
uh, the kind of the natural regularity that's going to be associated to this function capital pi. Um, uh, um, uh, which is when, when it hits this, when, when it hits the tau. It's rather going to be um, the degree of which uh, a certain function vanishes or blows up built from capital pi once we recenter it about around a point. So, uh, uh, so once we effectively subtract off appropriate Taylor expansions. It's the home, exactly, yeah, so this is exactly the home, these will be the, the beta i's that, uh, that Lorenzo was speaking about. So this is how they could, so they come up because of this. <laughs> yes, they're the beta i's. Okay, so then um, so this comes, uh, comes a definition. So our rule is uh, subcritical if there exists a map called reg, which goes from the, the set of types into R, such that reg of, of psi is smaller than the size of, of, of psi, and the uh, reg of, of i is smaller than the size of uh, the, the, the degree of i plus the infimum over all subsets which are multisets which are in R, and I take reg of n, where reg of n is defined to be all uh, pp inside of n, uh, reg of t minus e s. So p is, uh, remember these are, these are pairs of, of a type and a, and a multi-index, so this is, this is well defined. Um, okay, so, so this, is, this is the definition of, of, um, of subcriticality. Sub sub um, reg here uh, does represent something to do with regularity now. So re reg here is, a, is, a, is actually a lower bound on the regularity of, um, of the noise, like a strict lower bound. And uh, reg of i is uh, the lower bound on the regularity of the solution u to our, to our equation. So, so this would typically say be two, so this is the regularizing effect. And it kind of tells you that I want my regularity to be less than um, two, uh, plus everything that uh, appears on the right-hand side of the equation. That's, that's the, 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 roughly the way, the way to read this. So, so I, every time I hit the right-hand side of my equation with, with the heat kernel, I gain the regularity above what, uh, what, what I expect my solution to be. Okay. And if, uh, if you think about, so what this would mean in the critical case is that you could potentially have, say, an equal sign here. So the fact that this is a strictly inequality is, is what's referred to as subcritical. Okay, so as an exercise, um, show that uh, <coughs> for the rule that, uh, that was in a previous lecture for phi d minus one is subcritical for the so the, the, exactly the same scaling as I have over there for the heat, the heat equation. Uh, so this is subcritical for uh, d smaller than five. Um, and uh, not subcritical for, for d bigger than or equal to five. So the show, show that R, the 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 the, the one the, the rule that we had in the previous uh, in the previous lecture of the, of the equality. Um, <coughs> same with uh, so so similar thing. Show R for the generalized KPZ uh, is uh, is subcritical uh, if and only if. Um, so we had we were thinking of dimension two, but in principle we could have had ar arbitrary dimensions, uh, and this is uh, so in dimension two it's subcritical, um, and this is this is strict. I'm thinking of d here as an integer, so I I, I, I don't like uh, don't like uh, I, I don't love fractional dimensions at least yet. Okay, um, so. Uh, 
So the two equations that are presented before are indeed are indeed subcritical. Uh, the the point of the of the definition of subcriticality is the following result. This is kind of the key uh, the, the key um, co consequence. So uh, if R is subcritical. then the set of trees, set of trees tau, which strongly conform, uh, strongly conform to the rule, uh, and which have this degree um, of the tree being smaller than gamma, this is finite for all uh, real parameters gamma. Okay, so um, so if I fix any degree and I look at all all trees of a of a of a fixed um, uh, with with a, I fix an upper bound gamma and all trees with degrees less than gamma, uh, this is going to be a finite set. Um, and this corresponds roughly to the fact that um, uh, Lorenzo's uh, matrix valued or get a finite number of homogeneities. Basically, this is uh, um, so. Uh, so the proof I'm not going to, to present. Uh, if you're if you're up for it, try to prove it as an exercise. I, like there's the definitions are actually not that not that complex. There's nothing extremely uh, extremely sort of uh, doesn't require heavy machinery. Um, or so this can also be found in this paper that you just said uh, uh, nineteen. Okay. So we fix henceforth. And I'm, are normal and subcritical. And we define um, P to be the span of, um, so the real span of uh, all strongly conforming rules. Uh, so this, this is what we call the regularity structure. Um, generated by R. Okay, and then just as a, as a piece of notation, we also say um, tau of gamma is equal to span of taus um, in T0 such that tau of S is smaller than, uh, is, equal to is equal to gamma. And likewise for smaller than gamma, the same thing and smaller than gamma. Smaller than some degree. Okay, so this is um, uh, this is our um, uh, kind of the vector space on which we're going to define a whole bunch of things now. So are there any questions at this point? Yes. Yes, yes, yeah, model space, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't, this uh, somehow in my mind, I don't even distinguish between the two. Yeah, yeah, so this is some, sometimes called the, the Yeah, yeah, it's a kind of, it's, uh, yeah, I guess a grade, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I don't know if, if grading is the technical term, but, yeah. Yeah, yes, exactly, so I think, exactly, it's a, it's a direct sum of T gammas, uh, where the direct sum is over the finite, or the countable, yeah, the, the countable set of gammas that are possible gammas that appear as homogeneous as degrees of trees. Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, <clears throat> okay. So now we finally come to uh, to uh, uh, positive renormalization. Maybe I will finish this today. Maybe. 
big enough. <laughs> big enough. Um, so, um, so luckily I already gave this this construction, and this is the part this the, this uh, kind of motivational picture for how how we constructed a, a function taking t to uh, to two smooth functions. Uh, this is the, the starting point for, for uh, positive renormalization. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to restrict this to uh, to the just a set of, of trees which are um, uh, strongly con uh, which strongly conform to to to, to the rule. Okay, so I always think of a map pi as uh, um, as uh, this map as a map like this, and then I think of this now as a linear map. Um, so I extend it to a linear map from the from the regularity structure to this space of smooth functions. Okay, so what we want to do now is to construct um, another an another map. So we're going to construct a collection pi x's, where x's are in, in R D, which are recentered versions of the capital pi's, and uh, the the notation uh, uh, pi x. Uh, with respect to Lorenzo's talk is also purely non-coincidental. So this is exactly the same pi x's. And so now we're gonna see kind of an algebraic construction of, uh, so how, how you construct these, these, these pi x's given a smooth realization of your noise, um, sort of for a particular equation. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so it's the, their their definition is, is 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 completely analogous. So, uh, so this is a partial Q of the psi, except uh, we recenter functions in appropriate ways. Point x. This is equal to um, sorry, x y. This is y minus x. Uh, to the k. I also extend them multiplicatively. And, uh, and the catch is that I am, uh, I'm going to do exactly what we saw before, except uh, maybe I could have shortened this part. Um, I know on, uh, on, uh, about the, the, the previous talk, but uh, straying away from my, my notes at this point would be catastrophic. So I'm gonna define it almost like the definition of capital Pi, except I'm going to subtract the Taylor jet. This Taylor jet is exactly what we saw before. So this Taylor jet is given follows. So it's a sum over all k with uh, i p tau uh, small than i p tau s of um, uh, dot minus x k divided by k factorial over p k plus p is involved with by x now of x. Let me put it here. Okay, so I've subtracted off the natural Taylor jet just like we saw it before. And I'm gonna rewrite this. Um, so uh, I'm going to rewrite this as uh, dpk involved with pi x tau in a slightly sim simpler form. This is going to be the sum over the exactly the same k's that appear over here, except I'm going to put uh, uh, the, the parameter here that appears here to the power k divided by k factorial times fx of I A plus P of tau, where this uh, Fx I of, uh, for general index N of tau, um, this is defined to be uh, minus of the sum over all tau smaller than I N tau S minus X to the L divided by L factorial B N plus L K involved with by X tau. 
Yes. No, no, no. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Please. Yes, yes. No, no, no. It's more. It's 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 more singular. Um, so, so. Yeah. So so think of this k. So I've put this with a with a p, but it's probably simplest with. with yeah. So I'm regularizing this function. With, with, with K, so forget about the, the DP, so I think of P as being zero for now. Uh, I'm regularizing this function with K, but then, so this function, so the idea is that, okay, this function is something that vanishes at the point X at order uh, T of, uh, at the order degree of, of tau. So think of degree of tau as being 10. So this is, it has an upper bound, which is a polynomial uh, of degree, uh, well, uh, which has co uh, terms 10 and higher. Um, <coughs> And then I hit this function with the with the with the with the with the with the, with the cutoff. Um, I, I can involve this function with the with the cutoff Green's function of the of the, of the heat kernel. Now, because the uh, convolution with the heat kernel is a highly non-local operation, I'm going to basically get contributions from a whole bunch of things in a in a ball of, of radius one around x. And after that, there's no reason that that function should vanish at, at the point x. Like it's just going to be whatever it is. So it's going to be like some. Uh, averaged value of the of the Green's function uh, around this uh, around the point x, the averaging depends on on the function pi x tau, and so but I want to see something here, so I want this function to vanish at order say 12 uh, above the um, ar around the point x. So to see this vanishing of order 12, I base this is the this is the object I have to subtract. So it's a, think of it as a C12 function, and I can always subtract off a unique polynomial up to uh, higher orders. Uh, there's a minimal unique polynomial to subtract off to, to get it to vanish to order 12 around around the point x. This is this is that polynomial. So these derivatives appear because these are the derivatives of the, of the, of the function. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, okay. Um, Okay, uh, any other questions? Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, at, at this stage. No, I, 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 I don't think it will be a problem at this stage. No, at this stage it wouldn't be a problem. So these things would still be well defined. That's what I mean by, by, by it wouldn't be a problem. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so then there's a proposition. Uh, so uh, what, we, what we're going to kind of explore in, in the rest of this lecture is the relationship between pi x and the capital pi. So pi x is given given with this recursive definition, but then there was this this capital pi which had a much simpler definition. Just uh, I, I could take out the convolution of the Green's function directly without subtracting off this complicated uh, uh, complicated Taylor J. So <clears throat> there's a there's a proposition which is that for every x there exists a, uh, a linear map from from my regularity structure um, p into t such that pi x is equal to capital pi of f of x. In the proof, I'm going to uh, leave uh, also as an, as an exercise. Um, but uh, you, you actually don't need any, any kind of algebraic machinery at this stage to see the existence of this, of this map capital, capital fx. By the way, this fx, that, that, that is purely coincidental that it's the the germ from, from Lorenzo's talk. This FX has, has nothing to do with, uh, with, with, with germs in, in, in that terminology. So, uh, as a, so the, the, the proof is an, is an exercise. Uh, and as a hint, um, <clears throat> so work by induction, 
and define f of x whenever you see a product, define it as um, fx tau fx sigma. And whenever you see um, something like uh, ip of tau, uh, define this to be ip of fx tau plus um, this will exactly the same Taylor jet that we, virtually the same Taylor jet that we had before. Taylor over k factorial times these fx of uh, i k plus uh, e tau. So the fx's are defined uh, over there. Um, and just to just kind of to motivate this and why uh, perhaps reveal that this is not actually super, like extremely mysterious, um, you, you don't actually have that much to work with. You have a recursive definition for pi x and you have a recursive definition for, for pi. So you assume that you, you've constructed your, your map fx up to for all trees of a certain form. Uh, say, uh, go by induction on the number of instances of i that you see inside the tree, so the number of edges decorated with an i and perhaps a multi-index. Um, uh, and then uh, sort of uh, uh, when, you, when you write out uh, the, this, this equality on, on, on further trees in, in induction, you'll see that essentially the only sensible way to define fx for, for products is, is like this. And for every time you add an edge um, uh, i to a, to a tree, this is essentially the, the sensible way to define it. This kind of drops out naturally from definitions. Um, <clears throat> so, as a, f sort of as, a, as a further remark, you can see that from this construction, well, okay, so from the, uh, if, if, you, if, if you do the exercise, uh, the, the proof will actually reveal that um, fx tau has a very particular form. So, it's always given by this upper triangular structure. That, that Lorenzo mentioned. Um, uh, and uh, this H is in, some, some is in a space that uh, has um, a strictly lower degree than, than, than tau. And uh, in addition to this, so actually what this implies is that uh, Fx is invertible. So we, we get actually invertibility of these, of these guys for free. Uh, from this observation, and then moreover, H uh, is a is a, f uh, a finite sum of, of of trees, where essentially CIs are products of um, of, uh, of terms that appear like I K J tau J, so uh, products of elements of this type. Uh, potentially with some combinatorial factors coming from the factorials that, that, that appear. So multiples of products like this. Okay, so we're now going to systematize this a little bit more and try to learn something a little bit extra about these maps fx. So perhaps there's a, um, there's a, their, their existence is not too difficult to see. Um, <coughs> But there, perhaps there's some. Yes. 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 Exactly. So the gamma. The gamma x y. So that's an excellent point. Gamma x y is equal to f of x inverse f of y. Actually, this is an exact relationship. Exactly. Yeah. So at this point, I can I can write out the equations which are um, uh, which are which are important. So automatically, we have uh, from this construction with this definition, pi of y is equal to pi of f of y, which is equal to pi of x f x inverse f of y. So we so and this is the the gamma of x y.
with identity on a dev node. Uh, so I'm not assuming that this this is a consequence. So so yeah, maybe the way I wrote this actually is not. Uh, uh, so it's uh, so this remark is not that this statement implies this. It's like this is true. <laughs> And then <laughs> this implies. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, this is this is obvious. I mean, okay, it's obvious if you do the if you do the exercise. <laughs> yeah. So so morally, you can kind of actually tell. You can see this form actually from this inductive structure. So assume that it's true for for tau and for sigma. Then if I look at fx tau and fx sigma, and both f, f, fx tau and f, fx sigma are of this type, then the leading order term will be tau times sigma, that's for sure. And then, but then the same thing actually here. So this is a little bit less obvious, but okay, here it's, it's again obvious because ip of tau will be the leading order term that appears here, because ip of h will have smaller degree. Uh, you mean, uh, uh, why did I assume this? No. Oh no, th this 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 is true. This is uh, <laughs> this this is true. Once you uh, okay, I, okay, didn't claim actually uniqueness of this capital F in any way, but um, maybe this is more small. But uh, okay, I, I don't want to. Uh, on the safe side, I, I don't want to be. Yeah, I, I don't want to make any claims about uniqueness. But if you construct the FX inductively this way. <laughs> Then my claim is that this is true. Yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, yeah. Uh, so I should let, let, write this more okay. since fx is invertible. This claim is proved by induction as well. Yes, but I mean this this claim is uh, it's uh, it recalls the recursive construction exactly. You have this xk and the x. So by construction k has degree, by the restriction, k has degree smaller than ip of tau s. So this is why this, and this h, so these are real numbers. These are just, these are gonna be coefficients. They're, they're real numbers, so they, they're not parts of the, of, the, of the, they're not elements of the model structure. These are the elements of the model structure, of the, of the model space. Y yeah, yeah, yes, <laughs> because, yes, so. Yes, that's a good point, yeah. Okay, so fx, so thank you, fx xi is equal to xi, and fx uh, x is equal to, fx is equal to x minus little x of i. Yeah, I mean, this is, I need to leave something for the exercise. <laughs> and actually, actually, a tricky part about this exercise, so if you, if you do do it, uh, be careful to verify that these products, because we have a non-trivial structure now, we have this, um, uh, we have uh, uh, these trees that strongly conform. So it might not be a priori clear that the product of two fx tau and fx sigma, if, if tau and sigma, uh, if the product of tau and sigma strongly conforms, it's not necessarily obvious that this product conforms. So that's part of the exercise. And here's where you actually have to use no, 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 uh, normality. Um, so, uh, so, so that's that's part of the exercise, and this is a similar statement applies here. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It it comes about completely from this construction. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, later on, it, this is, so this is called the canonical model associated with the smooth noise psi that we started off with that. Later on, we'll be speaking about non-canonical models, hopefully, and, um, uh, and, and there, the gammas will still be given by relation of this type, it's just the capital pi will be defined slightly differently. And we'll go. No, they're they're always of this form. Yeah, us. Uh, so, um, uh, so okay, regularity structures can be phrased in a very sort of general f f framework. Um, uh, yeah, in in practice, I, I they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In practice, they are. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're going to explore a little bit now the algebraic structure that appears here and. Uh, 
the point of, uh, of this exploration is that it will reveal that uh, the set of all, um, uh, essentially the set of all FXs that appear in kind of from this construction with all possible like uh, values for, for Xi, um, those all possible choices for Xi, uh, they form a group. So we're going to, we're going to see this now. Quarter two, okay. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. Time flies. Um, so, making that one more definition. So, we're going to define a new space of trees. These trees are, are going to be polynomials and products of uh, everything the type. Uh, uh, I k where m is uh, is a positive, uh, k is is before n d, um, and then the k i in n d, and uh, tau i, this is the important part. Tau i strongly conforms to the rule, uh, and. Uh, uh, this, the degree of this, each one of these guys uh, is, uh, is positive. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, at this stage, um, uh, this, so tau i, so tau, tau type tau plus is in general not a subset of, um, uh, of, of tau zero. So because I don't, I don't demand anything about the, uh, the, the root. So at the root, I can have arbitrarily many edges, whereas my rule might exclude that. Okay. So then um, <clears throat> we're going to define uh, tau plus as being the span of uh, these guys. Plus. And then um, I'm going to define g plus to be the space of all f, which are linear maps from uh, T plus into R, which are which have a character property. Where this uh, one is the is a single uh, a tree with a, is a node with a single tree and zero decorations. Okay. So, okay, so uh, T plus, uh, so r remark, T plus is an algebra because I can, uh, I can uh, multiply arbitrarily many terms of this type together. But uh, T, uh, this, the model space T, of course, is not is not an algebra. I can't I can't in general multiply arbitrarily many elements there. Um, <coughs> uh, and uh, so what I'm going to do is for for f x as before, 
I can extend and kind of promote it to an element of, uh, of G plus by multiplicativity and linearity. So for, because I've defined, I've defined fx in, for, for every tree and uh, according to this rule, given my xi. Um, and so I just define it, I can, I can extend it clearly to a, to a character on this algebra. Um, <clears throat> and what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce a Hopf algebra structure on, um, on G plus. So <clears throat> so first of all, I'm going to do it in this way. The sum is over the same index set K that appears inside, uh, well, essentially every other sum. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I think this construction, this definition of delta plus is, uh, is actually quite kind of natural at this point, given that we've seen how, uh, how to construct uh, uh, the, 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 the capital Fx's. So, <clears throat> oh, yes, 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 sorry, yes, you're right. Uh, tensor product, okay. So the, the, the right factor is always in the space T plus. The left factor is always in the space, always in the space T. So, <clears throat> again, as a, an exercise. Um, so, first of all, check that Delta plus is well defined in the sense that it, it maps the correct uh, uh, trees that strongly conform into trees that strongly conform. So that this recursive definition makes sense. Um, this, this is uh, analogous to checking that the map Fx uh, constructed in the, in the proof of the population is the same. Yes? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, it's, yeah, it's just, very, so it's the it's the sum over the same k that appears in all the other all the other guys. So this is i t tau of s. Yes, I, I won't be lazy. <laughs> um, it's a fi so these are all finite sums. I should emphasize this. They're, they're they're finite sums. So show that with this with this definition, that the fx's that we just constructed have a, have a kind of a, quite a nice form. They're equal to gamma of f of x, where, where gamma f of x is defined as uh, identity tensor fx times delta plus of tau. You know, or, or, or you hit it with, a, with an element of the, uh, of, of, of the regularity structure. Um, uh, okay, so, so we, we, I think at, at this point, this is, uh, it might not be super, super ex exactly clear that, that the, exactly this identity holds, but the sums look very similar to what they were before. The recursive definition is the same as that for, for f of x, so for capital f of x. So this is, I, I think comes as no surprise. This is a very nice, uh, um, I think, uh, so at this stage, it's, it's, um, it's just a systematization of the construction we, we saw before. And, uh, What's the perhaps kind of quite nice thing is that um, we can actually 
promote this algebra T plus uh, to a hot algebra. So this is, uh, this is somehow uh, quite nice. So, uh, and less obvious than, than what we just did. Um, so we can define um, uh, delta plus in uh, um, uh, essentially the same way. Um, you just have to be careful when when you when you define delta plus of tau of i of i p of tau. So the recursive definition is exactly the same. It's just that we've changed what the left factor is. The left factor is now now t plus instead of t. Um, so you have to um, put in a kind of a positive projection here uh, times uh, the identity of uh, delta plus of tau uh, plus um, then this, the the rest of the sum is exactly the same. Uh, um, and uh, what you have to use is the fact that, well, what you have to be careful about is that this is the this is the delta plus that appeared over here. <laughs> so the tau, this this tau, uh, it yes yes pi pi, pi x it uh, yeah it. So I have to this this projection p plus is the projection that that just kills every tree that's not positive. And I, I do this to so that I land inside of T plus. Uh, and this tau is an element of, of T, not of not of T plus. So this delta plus of, of T is um, is defined uh, like, like we did over there before. So because uh, these tau i's uh, they're they're really trees that strongly conform to to T um, to T zero. So what uh, what is perhaps uh, now uh, I think uh, um, kind of less uh, less obvious, but I will I will again leave the proof of the following result as an exercise for the for the brave. If you're if you're familiar with Hopf algebras, I strongly encourage you to do this. So show that there exists. Okay, so the uh, the theorem <laughs> it's not an exercise yet. The theorem is that there exists a linear map goes from T plus to T plus, such that uh, the tuple T plus, M plus, uh, delta plus, uh, and A plus uh, is a half algebra. Where m plus is the where m plus here is the map that sends tau inverse sigma to um, tau sigma the the, 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 the product map um, and uh, moreover um, t is a co uh, yeah co module. Over T plus, and what this means, so uh, in other words, be explicit about these these definitions. Um, have the following equality of operators. Uh, and these, uh, this equality holds uh, regardless of whether you treat um, the, the domain of the left-hand side and the right-hand side as T or T plus. So you can, you can think of this as being maps from H into uh, uh, T, I'll, I'll get this wrong if I try to, try, because I didn't write it down. So it's, uh, it's whatever it would be like T, H tensor, H tensor T plus, or H tensor T plus, or whatever. Uh, it's, uh, you, 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 can, uh, uh, you can see the details from there. Um, uh, but the, 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 the point of this is that this is co-associative. So as I said, uh, for the proof, um, you can try it as an exercise. So, but, uh, 
um, maybe uh, you can proceed by induction. So that's that's the that's the hint. But it's a, it's a star exercise. It's a bit harder than the other ones. And uh, if you want a proof, so uh, um, I'll refer to this paper of uh, of Hira, I think. Yes. Section section eight maybe section eight two point one. If I remember correctly. Or so. The definition in, 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 the, in that paper is slightly different from what I gave here, but it's equivalent up, up to a change of basis. So if you if you see the proof, you will see that um, uh, that it carries over to this situation. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so this this delta plus. So the first. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So this is an operator that really maps from H. Let, let me do the bit of the footwork. So it's a H maps. It's always into H tensor uh, T plus, and then after that, it always maps it into um, again H tensor T plus tensor T plus. So that's. Um, and H here, um, H can be, it belongs to either T or T plus. So I'm using the same notation just to denote them. Um, uh, so it can be, so the first, the first delta plus and then this delta plus can, can be, and this delta plus uh, can be either the co-product or the co-module. This guy's always the co-product. Okay. Um, uh, any other questions at this stage? Period. So, if not, let me. Oh, actually, I might uh, I might finish today. Hmm. Oh. Um. Yes. <laughs> so the um, it has been communicated to me by by Karusha Brekini Far that the A plus is standard terminology, which is an antipode. <laughs> yes, uh, and I didn't write out the the specifying properties of the antipode. Um, sorry. Yes, unit and co unit. Uh, That's part of the exercise. You, you, have to, you have to find the unit and co-unit. <laughs> no, but I, I, this, uh, I think uh, I, I appreciate the, because uh, actually in a general setting, you might have, uh, it's actually not trivial to find a unit and co-unit, at least. Uh, and reading, reading in Lorenzo's paper, you actually it wasn't trivial to, <laughs> to, to actually get an intuitive definition for some of the units and co-units. Uh, here, uh, here it's 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 quite 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 safe. It's it's quite okay. But there are some situations where it's actually uh, not 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 so not so trivial. Okay, so the let me. Um, this is the antipode. This is the name for a. Um, so. Um, and actually, let me, uh, um, I, I won't, uh, I'll need to then specify the defining properties of, of A plus, I will need the unit and co-unit, which I, I don't want to speak about. Um, <clears throat> so with this uh, exercise, and you'll need to know the definition of the of a Hopf algebra to, 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 to do this exercise, um, but, uh, but it's much easier than the star exercise over there. So show that G plus is a group. Um, with product uh, um, 
f circle g uh, is equal to f tensor g delta plus. Um, and that uh, um, uh, f, which gets mapped to this gamma of f, which I did rewrite for you, is a representation. It's a representation of G plus onto the linear operators of the, the um, a regular destruction. So show that, so for a group, if you go um, back to, uh, um, uh, if you go back to the definition of a group, uh, you need to prove associativity and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So associativity uh, comes from here and of, the, of this product and the inverse comes from the, uh, from the, from the antipode. So again, you, for this exercise, you need to know uh, the definition of the antipode uh, or, uh, or for general Hopf algebra. And this, this exercise is completely generic. Once you have a Hopf algebra, this, this is, this is um, <clears throat> So this G plus, this is sometimes called the, the structure group of your mark. For those people that have sometimes read about regularity structures, you have a model space and then a structure group. So this is how you actually come up with them in, 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 in practical situations. <coughs> So uh, let me finish with, um, with the final um, uh, with the final reason. So why did we why did we do all of this? So we did all of this because we now get something which is um, uh, which behaves good around every point x. So for for smooth psi, we can show that. Pi x of tau, for any tree tau, behaves of the following in the following way. There exists some constant um, depending on on psi, uh, such that uh, this bound holds uniformly on, on compact sets, and such that gamma of x y tau. Recall that this is. Uh, f of x inverse f of y, where f of x is defined uh, uh, um, uh, This, at a, on a particular level of the regularity structure, t, t gamma, this behaves like y minus x to tau minus gamma. So this, the way you should interpret this norm is that it's uh, you project a component of the sky. So this guy has it's, recall the model space is a, is, a, is, a, is a direct sum, and this is the projection onto the t gamma component. Yes, um, you could use the extension to um, <coughs> Yeah, you could use the extension. Uh, you mean you, you could can use the extension for it, for theorem for it. Uh, yeah. or, <clears throat> no, no, no. This is you could you could certainly set up. So this you can prove by hand actually as well without the extension theorem. Yeah. So you can definitely do that. You just need to just tape. You know, uh, 
a Taylor's theorem which works for arbitrary statements. So once you have that, which is not so difficult to believe, uh, you can prove this by hand. So this, uh, this, this follows from the inductive definition. But yes, you could also siphon this, uh, uh, but the proof of the extension theorem is much more complicated than, than proving this by hand. Yeah, yeah, uh, uniformly over um, over compact, uh, uniformly over compact sets. Yeah, so for every compact set, yeah, for every compact set, there exists uh, a constant uh, that depends on the compact set in psi, such that this bound holds. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, um, so uh, can I take w one more minute? Thank you. <laughs> so let me just drop this definition now, so that I, because I think it, it fits in nicely um, in this uh, uh, in this lecture, and then I can pick up from from it in the next one. So what we call is that um, um, so. <clears throat> uh, if you go through this construction, so. I'm going to say that there exists a map which sends uh, every capital pi um, to something called Z of pi, this collection of pi x's and gamma xy's. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay, perhaps it's um, not, not the right time to do it as the, as the final lecture, but I'm going to change my perspective a little bit. I'm not going to think about my capital X as being given by, by smooth psi anymore, uh, but I'm going to think about it as just an arbitrary map that, that sends uh, um, so, so pi here is an arbitrary map that's, that uh, sends T into, uh, into C infinity. And uh, I define uh, my pi X and gamma X according to the same procedures I did before. So I just set pi x on, on xi's to be whatever it was on, on this guy, and the polynomials stay the same. And after that, I, I define it recursively according to the definition uh, that, that, that I started with. Except for to resolve products, so in general, I'm not going to have, uh, I don't have a multiplicative property anymore. So this, this I have to set it up as being um, according to uh, this, uh, Fx tau Fx uh, sigma also in, 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 in inductively. There's a if you if you kind of go back through through the steps, there's a way of of associating to every map pi, uh, uh, so uh, something which is this uh, this um, capital pi x, and um, <coughs> uh, and the associated gammas, uh, and I, I call. Um, So a capital map pi is called a tree model if this uh, constructed object z of pi is a model. And uh, a model in the sense of, of the, the kind of the bounds that Lorenzo presented. You have to test it against test functions, and then you get uh, uh, something like this. And then your analytic constraints. Okay, so okay, this is a bit rushed, but just just believe me that uh, this this procedure that I had before it didn't rely on on multiplicativity of the pi x's. Once I've given a capital pi, I can just res I can just inductively define define my pi x's this way. Um, so, uh, in particular, this theorem tells us that the canonical lift, what I call the capital pi, of associated now to a fixed realization of the, what I think of as the noise, this, this psi, um, is indeed a pre-model. So this is what, this is effectively what this theorem is, is saying. And so in the next, uh, in the next lecture, um, we'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll start speaking about uh, negative renormalization. And, uh, and this is going to be a way of, uh, so what we'll see is we'll see a group which effectively acts on pre-models pre um, in a kind of an, in a way such that their, their images, uh, uh, their, their model images 
uh, are transformed in a continuous way. I'm, I'm not going to speak that much about continuity, but this is this is the idea. So we're going to define a, um, a so this this positive Hopf algebra is a tool that allows us to go from so um, okay. So let me actually I can I can explicitly write out what the, the so the pi x is 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 a capital pi n zero f x delta plus. Um, so f x is defined recursively. Um, and I always have this relation. And the, so the positive renormalization is a tool that allows us to, to go from capital pi to pi x. And then in the next lecture, the kind of the negative renormalization will be something that acts on these, on this free model space. So I'll define that. Okay, thank you.